Okay. Hey, what's up, you guys? It is week number nine of the Chazway podcast. And I'm joined by my friends up in Minnesota, where it's really, really cold. Micah and Jenna Kavit. What's up, you guys? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Super, super good. So I've asked these guys to come on because they have the craziest, most wild story from like high school, young sweethearts to traveling the country to eating crazy foods all around the world. Uh, to like trampling through feet and feet of snow last week or just the other day to get the perfect shot in photography and video. So um, tell us a little bit about yourselves. First of all, let me just say this quick disclaimer. Micah is actually Anna's brother. And so that's how I know these guys. Jenna is uh, his wife. And I'm super grateful that, um, well, Anna's pretty awesome, but she's got a really cool family. So if there was a family that I could like, uh, me kind of become a part of like this is a cool family to become a part of so i just really appreciate you guys just uh kind of accepting braxton and i as well we've had so much fun with you guys just getting to know you guys so um yeah so that's how i know these guys and uh tell us like introduce yourselves a little bit both of you if you would and then talk about like what you guys do and and who you are all right well i'm micah john yeah so uh essentially we are photographers and videographers that's pretty much the baseline but I mean uh, we work with people all over the world we work with mainly like tourism and outdoor recreation clients um, and it's all just kind of creating video and photo packages that they can use for advertising and commercial use um, but yeah it's yeah. I mean that's kind of like the that's kind of like the the base <laughs> Yeah. base of what it is but it's kind of spawned from a bunch of different avenues of, as far as how we got yeah here. yeah and we I mean we started dating in high school we were 16 and so it's been what like 20 years 21 years now at this point yeah <laughs> um <laughs> 21 years a long time <laughs> but um yeah so we've kind of I'm just kind of taken a lot of different paths throughout our life I guess yeah through, and it's, and it's kind of like how you want to approach the story. We could we could kind of go long form or <laughs> short enough, but yeah, okay. So, well, let me just ask this. So, first of all, um, Micah and Jenna own Kavit Creative, and uh, at the end of this, you guys will find in the description all of their socials. I definitely encourage you guys to check them out individually on socials, but also uh, Wonder the Map is kind of there. W- would you say is that kind of your group? Is that the social that is like your journey? Would you say? Yeah, you got a lot of Instagram. You got a few Instagram pages. Yeah, I would say Wander the Map is more like our travels and everything. And I haven't been all that great at updating it lately, but um, trying to get back on board with that. But yeah, that's kind of like more of a documentation of all of our travels and the places that we've been. Okay. And then that kind of transitioned into like Kavit Creative. So the Kavit Creative is more of our work kind of. Okay, cool. So, portfolio. And maybe I could back us up and kind of explain. So, so basically, it all started no so jenna grew up traveling like she was always going to florida going places and always from then wanted to move and live somewhere else so we after we got married we ended up moving to florida and i think my first time on a plane was i was 18 and i went down with her on a family trip so that was like i didn't get on a plane till i was 18 i was deathly afraid of flying that's crazy I think I was sitting in her mom's lap half the flight, <laughs> just like sweating bullets. Poor K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah K, there's a lot of poor K. <laughs> but um, so we were when we were living in Florida, I was um, before that I was I graduated with a degree in photography, commercial photography. So that was my background. Um, Jenna had a corporate job at the time. I was trying to find anything I could do as far as like assisting other photographers. Um, and I think at a certain point, Jenna started getting into like travel bloggers that were around at that point. And um, kind of the start of it was a start the travel uh, whole tra- whole travel blogging industry like getting more popular. And yeah, that yeah. was kind of when travel bloggers were really getting popular. It was around like it was like that 2011 2012 time, and we started doing a lot of traveling or we were doing a lot of traveling and Jenna was like, 
wanted to get into writing and wanted to document the stuff. So we're like, why don't we just take what you do with your photo and videos and she can write and we start our own little blog. So that's how kind of Wander the Map started was incorporating my photo background with her obsession with travel and writing and Wander the Map was formed. And, and it's basically kind of an escape from my job because I was working in like an insurance job and it just was not a good fit for me. It wasn't something I was really interested in. And mm -hmm. I was like, I need something that I enjoy on a daily basis, you know, that I can do that. I can just kind of an out, creative outlet that I enjoy. Should be sane. Yeah. So that's kind of how that all started. And then towards the end of Florida, we were like, we finally got to a point where like, we wanted to move back home, be closer to family. And one of the stipulations to moving back was that Jenna doesn't, <laughs> she was like, absolutely not getting another corporate job because in Minnesota, it gets dark at four in the winters and it, you wake was, up. Yeah, it was dark when I went to work, dark when I came home from work. I didn't have a window in my, in my cubicle that I was working in before. I was like, I can't do that again. Sure. So I was like, if we can make it work where we can do like photo, video, writing, like that kind of stuff, like let's, let's move back and give it a try. So we moved back I, <laughs> and I didn't know how that it was going to work because at the time there wasn't still like a, an idea of, okay, how, how do you actually monetize this and how do you make money doing this? Yeah. And, um, but it worked and I felt like every time we thought <laughs> this was it something like, would pop up like oh we might need to go get jobs somewhere yeah. else you know it's like but we'd then, get a client that would magically pop into our, you know it's just kind of like the connections we made just started to slowly work snowball. out you know and um allowed and, us to keep doing it yeah so one of the map always was going and i was still doing my commercial work with other people in the in the twin cities and eventually we just decided to like okay let's create an entity that kind of umbrellas everything. And that's where Kivit Creative start, started. It was, it's a photo and video production company. Um, we travel a lot. We work with a lot of clients on the road. We met a lot of clients because of Wander the Map and a lot of clients found us because of Wander the Map. So Wander the Map almost became like this huge marketing tool for us. It almost became this way where that's how people found us. And then they realized what we did and then they would hire us for photo and video work. So we weren't getting hired traditionally as like writers, bloggers all the time. Right. There was portions where we would, but it was mainly like they would see us and be like, oh, we need a commercial. We need photos for advertising. Yeah. And, that's... and rather than like focusing energy on like affiliate sales and like monetizing like the traffic to the website, we've kind of focused it more on um, the just the networking for to get the clients for the photo and video project mm -hmm. so that's kind of where we put more of our energy in so that's kind of a long ramble of everything yeah. <laughs> but essentially one of the map is our travel blog it's became more of a marketing piece for us and kavit creative is actual our actual company that's what we're registered with that's like our if you hired us you'd be hiring kavit creative and it'd be a photo video production Gotcha. Full yeah. production, like you guys do editing. I mean, I know that you guys um, they talk about that. If somebody hired you, what could they hire you to do? Just give it, a couple examples. Anything yeah. and everything. I mean, I, I kind of refer to, it's kind of like, if you go to a car dealership, it's kind of like, what kind of car do you want to drive off the lot with? So I okay. mean, give you a Geo Metro or we can give you like a Land Rover. What do you want? Yeah. Settlement. And that just comes down to like, what deliverables are so we can make you a, a full commercial that you could put on broadcast that you can air we could get a 20 person crew put together in a couple days and have a full production for you or we could come in just the two of us and get you some really solid stuff to use for social media and um yeah other, i mean a lot of a lot of so. what we provide is like photo photo content for people to use and marketing for like advertisements, magazine articles, or their social media or their website, or else like, like you said, like, well, sometimes we'll come up with the whole concept of the video depending on, and a lot of times the client will come to us and say, Hey, we want this video. And then we'll film that and edit it and yeah. either for social media or for commercials or, you know, kind of a whole wide range of things. But, but I would say it's about 50, 50 between us coming up with, 
the concept from start to finish to everything and the client already having the idea and just needing us to film and edit it. And I think that's what we kind of prefer is when they come to us with a con like a concept that we can kind of just bring our ideas to, but it's not kind coming of from scratch. Yeah, yeah, just like just just work together to to yeah. come yeah. up with the end the end game. Jenna, you mentioned being you know travel writing and and vlogging and and blogging and having that um, desire even for the last for several years. It sounds like where did that stem from? I mean, as Micah mentioned, you've traveled, done a lot of traveling with your family for years. At what point do you think where where did that come from? Where you really wanted to, I guess, document it or um, make that a little bit more of a public thing yeah well I've always I mean we would go every year on a trip um, like a big trip every year growing up and then like a couple small things and I've always loved photography actually like I would always go and back in the disposable camera day I'd have packed like five disposable cameras for a trip to Florida you know that's a big yeah. party she yeah. probably got me yeah. into photography before <laughs> most people like, yeah yeah I had a digital camera in high school and you know uh, when they were coming out, it was kind of one three of three megapixels. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was yeah. baller. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was just something I always loved doing. And I always enjoyed writing, but I never, I, I never did anything with it. I never liked to like, I just would write, you know, just on my own or whatever. But, um, and so then just growing up, I just love traveling and always wanted to do more and more of it as much as I can. And so I think I, I never really wanted to put it out there for people. Um, I'm always really self-conscious about that kind of stuff. Um, but I think it was just that job that just kind of pushed me to just want to do something different. It's like, okay, well, let me just give it a try. And it was, yeah. it was really hard to like, come up with a, a website name like I still don't really love the the name <laughs> wander the map but you know it's like I don't think I'd ever love anything I picked you know it's like one of those kind of things so it was like really hard to like get it started and get it going and even still to like share it with people you know I'm always yeah. kind of like oh, I don't I don't really want to like share this but you know it's it I think you like the act of doing it all yeah. just not people actually really not people yeah <laughs> judging like it. people I don't know I don't care but people like I know I get kind of like oh you read that you know I get right about it. but um yeah. but yeah it's just it's just something I think just born out of needing something to entertain myself you know in a job that I didn't like and yeah a path a path to do something different yeah mm -hmm. huh and Micah, I know you went to school for you. What was your degree in? You mentioned it was it like, uh, tell me what your degree was. It's a it's a bachelor's of fine arts, but it's commercial photography based. Okay, so where did that come from? Like, I know that you're a musician, and I know that you. Well, yeah, like, you know, I, I mean, I think there was only one plan. I was going to be in a band, and that was it. Like, <laughs> there was no plan B. <laughs> <laughs> and then plan b came along <laughs> plan b came, but i was a hundred percent certain that i was going to play drums in a band and yeah. that was, that was, and that happened like i played a lot in the twin cities with other people and went on small little regional tours with bands Even and stuff in florida, but you played a lot. in florida i played a lot but it wasn't it wasn't going to go anywhere but i remember because i was working at comcast cable as an inbound sales associate and I was just miserable. It was like, we were both miserable at corporate jobs. Like it was just not for us at all. And I remember we took a trip to Florida to visit her aunt and she was a part of this book club or something at the time. And they're one of the weeks they were talking about how they're like read something or went over something that was like this motivational thing where it's like, you should pick the three things that you love the most in life and just do that because life's way too short and I was like mm. no. I was like why am I doing this so I was like music bodies of water and photography I don't know why bodies of water I always love well, being by, the, by lake the ocean the, ocean yeah. and lake yeah. So yeah I think after that trip I moved we came back to Minnesota and I was like looking at schools and getting out and ended up going to a, a photography school in the Twin Cities and quit that job and gave you the motivation to kind of look at what you were doing with your life and yeah. realize it wasn't what you wanted and mm -hmm. kind of change it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. so yeah, I went to, it's funny though, cause everyone was like, 
they think about like I've, we've heard this more than we can count everyone's like oh do it while you while you're young do it while you can do it while you can so they and have to settle like, down and <laughs> you get to a point and it's like well can't afford to go back to my corporate job <laughs> you know what i mean you get to a point where like it's that little level of little win or success where it's like you know what i think i think we'll stick with what we're doing because it's not like it's it's freelance you're an independent contractor you're owning your own business there's no one giving you a two-week check and benefits but it's the same time it's like Mm -hmm. i mean not that we're making a ton of money or anything but we're making we both had you know entry-level corporate jobs so we're making a lot more than we did at that point yeah and you have freedom like that's what i always talk i talk so much about that freedom 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 oh, yeah and, we and, have control of everything yeah you're exactly and maybe even more than freedom is control maybe that's really even a bigger picture is that you are in control mm -hmm. um and you know what's interesting you were talking earlier micah about like how wonder the map kind of uh, maybe helped get you some of the different gigs what's interesting is that although that was like a, a travel vlog or blog uh and that concept it's really cool because it seems like knowing a little, and we'll, I want to talk about some of the different kind of like niche type gigs you guys have done. But what's interesting is I think wander the map and, and who you guys are and how you've positioned yourself as just you've documented your journey and your travels and who Micah and Jenna really are the kind of work that you've gotten. Like the fact, the truth is you could stay in um, like Minneapolis or you could stay where you guys you know, currently are like, you could stay in one area of Minnesota and you could probably find enough work and maybe even more, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, to pay the bills. But because of what you do and what you've shown at with Wander the Map of this is just kind of who Micah and Jenna are, you've gotten a really awesome, like niche type of clientele and work um, that's actually really awesome. I think that part, would you agree that part of that comes from who you guys are? Because that's part of your creative is what you guys capture because of of what you guys love and who you are yeah and i would say because the because of one of the map i would say that 80 percent of our clients aren't even minnesota based mm -hmm. so i yeah. meant like and then the ones that are are mostly tourism based too yeah like we mostly with tourism. a lot of the different tourism boards in minnesota whether yeah. it's on the state level or different local county C cvbs and or even towns and towns yeah but yeah, so, I would say because of Wanda the Map, it's opened up the door to clients that are not just Minnesota based, but they're based. I mean, we've worked with clients in the Galapagos. We worked with clients in Iceland. We worked with clients all over the U.S. And um, uh, one of our the so some of the people that we work with the most, we actually met at a travel blog yeah. conference yeah. in Billings, Montana. We went to the conference there and we had a little like speed meeting with um, one of the vendors that was there. And that spawned into like four different regular clients of ours that we have, you know, yeah. that don't Anna, even do anything with the blog side, but the, it's the all on the commercial, side. commercial stuff. So it's like, again, they'll meet us They'll meet us through the blog or find us through the blog, but then work with us for like the commercial stuff and yeah. like the mm -hmm. photo video. So, yeah. Um, so but I think that's like the biggest thing is like, I think the one of the maps given us the ability to network with so many people and meet people and get to. Um, and it's given us like fun clients where things that we enjoy, like outdoor adventure type. Yeah. Well, I think that that that's kind of what part of my yeah. thought was is that it really yeah. has allowed you to do stuff that is in alignment with with yeah. what you guys love, you know, for yeah. the most part. I'm sure it's not always that way, but it sounds like a lot of it is. So yeah. let's talk for a second about uh, there's a couple of things I want to dive into. I want to talk about like some of the different type of work you've done, but then I also want to talk about some crazy travel because I know you guys have traveled a lot, but let's talk about some work. So like, tell me about some of the craziest jobs you guys have done, like um, different different gigs like maybe some some wild clients or some fun crazy things you guys have done some 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 you've shot for um the first shoot that I well in Florida so in Florida I was assisting so I wasn't shooting a bunch but the first assisting job I had down in Florida was on a shoot with LeBron James okay so that, that was crazy so like for about six hours I stood on in the studio with him putting baby powder on LeBron James hand so he can make that <laughs> cloud of smoke thing yeah 
So I got to stand next to LeBron and do that for about six hours. Is he about my height? Yeah, yeah, a little, right around there. A little shorter. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I worked with another guy down there, and all he shot was private planes, exotic cars, and yachts. So we got to okay. go and shoot all these. Totally random. Ra- yeah. yeah. Um, so we got to go and photograph that stuff. And there's another guy that was just resorts. And so it was kind of cool. But the cool thing was I got to see like how three different people did so many different things yeah. and take all that and make my own little style and absolutely it yeah. off of that. And then yeah. one of like the first clients that we kind of had when we moved back to Minnesota was Best Western, where basically we would travel we traveled like all over the country that for about a year solid and um we were going to national parks and Mm -hmm. going and doing like just all these outdoor adventure type things like hiking the great sand dunes and colorado and recording it all and being like hey these are things you can do with a best western nearby yeah (laughs) and so we were kind of creating them like a library of content so like we spent a year just traveling, traveling the, over. including Canada. Yeah. And it was just wow. all yeah. these outdoor adventure stuff that like whitewater rafting, best western could promote. Biking, yeah. kayaking. And so that was kind of a cool, cool project, you know, because yeah, you had to go and do so many different things. Huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we worked in the Galapagos with a it was a tourism company down there that was trying to promote land-based tourism. Because a lot of people think that Galapagos, you have to go on a cruise. And um, they were saying like, well, well to cruise to get between the islands, but you can actually stay on the islands too. Yeah. So okay. we were down there for about like a week. Um, I think it was like 10 days. Yeah. Swimming yeah. with, man, we were swimming with turtles. We saw penguins down there. Hammerhead we were, sharks. Hammerhead <laughs> sharks swam underneath us. Wow. We were doing bike tours and hiked the volcano hiked the volcano and learned a bunch of stuff met awesome people and and... the thing about that one that was really weird though we were actually on um a tv show yeah (laughs) they were filming for a tv show i don't what was the outdoor tv was filming a tv show we were in it but we were also filming like behind the scenes (laughs) while we were yeah so while you were on that show yeah so okay I don't remember the name of the show even facing waves facing waves but it it, oh I hate being on camera so it was so awkward in that regard like being filmed Mm -hmm. um but but so that was a whole whole weird experience there was a group of other people who do kind of what we do with us so that was a lot of fun but yeah yeah Yeah. so that was one of the stranger projects I'd say yeah from my angle (laughs) yeah for sure Yeah. yeah Okay, so in in Kavit Creative, who does what? Like, obviously, Micah, it sounds like certainly with a background, like shooting is uh, is your thing. Like, Jenna, are you are you taking the pictures? Are you shooting as well, or is does Micah have you like hauling in all the gear? Are you like his? Are you his gopher? Is that is that what he makes you do on these yeah, sets? Pretty much, I do right? All the, my <laughs> my all the heavy lifting. My <laughs> back would yes. beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> that would beg to differ. Um, we do both. Jenna's Jenna, yeah. like there'll be I'll start with the video camera, she'll be rocking stills, and then we'll switch and try and get the same thing, in. which is cool because we each have a style and so right. you could um, I feel like most of it you do like more of the filming and video, but mm-hmm. but yeah, like I'll do a, I do a lot of like the um planning for the travel, the invoicing, the um more like the book work side of things like all the taxes you know all of that kind of things and um just the organization and making sure we're on schedule and making sure we get the shots we need to get and that she's, kind of stuff she'll she's more. more takes on more of the producer role i would say yeah okay but she's also very hands-on with the post-production side i mean yeah it's just the two of us so we're all we're doing it all unless yeah. there's unless there's budget where we can hire bigger crew it's it's kind of us so I mean yeah yeah I do I I almost I help you do more like second shooter b-roll yeah and assist you kind of almost essentially when we're when we're on set yeah yeah so a theory hypothetically like let's say you're on um a set and you know you're shooting video Micah and then is your audio often done like 
with boom mics or are they, I mean, I assume every situation is different, but is a lot of it done with boom mics? And if so, does that become Jenna's job? Yeah. So it depends on the project if we're doing like interviews, but if we're doing talking heads on camera where people are speaking, it'll be like a boom pole or as, as well as a lavalier mic. We'll always have multiple mics going just for backup. Mm -hmm. um, boom is always going to be your cleanest, nicest audio. So if we can have a boom mic rolling, we'll always do that. And for the interviews, thankfully, it's on a stand. Usually, okay. it's I'm not. I'm not strong enough to <laughs> hold it for that long. But no, okay. if it, if yeah. we're doing interviews, ninety percent of the stuff that we do for interviews stationary. is stationary. Otherwise, we'll have somebody walk with. <laughs> Usually, what will happen is I'll turn like somebody into an audio engineer on that day. If, if yeah. let's say there's not a budget to hire an audio engineer, well. The client, the client, have to the client might have that. to hold yeah. the boom pole to make up for for that cost. So I'll get all the audio ready and set to go. And um, it one and because of that, I I did purchase a recorder that in in the audio world records raw vi raw audio, just like a camera records raw video. Okay, so it's basically bulletproof like if if your if your levels are peaking you can always bring it back and they're never crushed and same like if you play it back and you don't hear anything well you can bring it up like 60 depth um, decibels and still have a perfect it's almost like a safe proof recorder basically Which, so you're not having to like engineer it in real time yeah so and i'll not, get it to a the, lot more hands off anyways i'll get to the closest yeah. settings possible and hit record and i'm pretty much safe but, cool that's awesome that's really cool. All right. I love that. That's awesome. So um, what about like, I would say quick though, that a lot of our audio is more like Foley based, like sound effects. So we'll go after we're done filming and go and do like sound design where we'll just do audio steps of footsteps or fireplace or, or a golf cart driving or a golf by, cart driving by. And we'll just create this catalog of audio clips that we can go and layer in because when we're recording, usually we're not running audio. Unless it's in really, audio. yeah. Unless it's talking. Unless yeah. it's talking, yeah. but like but if we're I would showing say, somebody skiing, you know, we're not getting recording audio. the. Yeah. No, all the, all the audio is done in post, and that's just fully. So we put when you watch the first edit, it's just silent, and then that's what's cool. That's one of my favorite parts about audio because I do have that music background or editing because of that music background is being able to have it come to life with audio because I feel like your audio is 90% of your video and if your if your audio sucks it looks like a home movie but if your audio is amazing it looks like a production so yeah all that, that's really fascinating yeah so yeah 90% of to 100% of the audio that you hear in any one of our videos is done after the fact and post. And do you go, like, do you have a lot of that shelves already? Or do you, a lot of, do, will you go back and will you watch something in, in post and then go, okay, well, we need to create these ski tracks. And then do you go out and create them or footsteps or a door shutting? Do you, do you feel like how much, what percentage, what percent are you, re, are you creating after the shot versus you already have stored? Now we have a lot of it stored and we're, okay. We, we, we will, if it's pretty specific, like we worked with a resort and they have a dinner bell that they still ring. That's back from like the, <laughs> I don't know, from when it was open. Yeah. And early 1900s. So yeah. when it's stuff that's specific to a location, we'll get it there that we just can't recreate, but we're also member, we have memberships on different sound effect websites and so audio if websites. If it's something so, we don't have or can't yeah. go create, we can always okay. there too, but. But like right now, we have a huge library of audio that we can put from. Pull I love from. that. Yeah. Yeah. But even There's specific so stuff like a, a female breathing. Yeah. Uh, Just um, random, you know, like, like kids laugh. Kids and, laughing you know, and weird. Yeah. Huh. There's somebody I see on TikTok occasionally that her, she, that's what she does is record for, tell, I don't know if it's TV, movie, maybe all yeah. of the above, but she yeah. has this like, what do you call that? What what is what's that called when you're making it's sound effects, but is there a name for that? It's Foley. F-O-L-E-Y. Foley. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Sound well, there's 
this lady I'll, I'll scroll by occasionally on on tiktok and she's recording like uh and it's like in her maybe her home or office studio and she's she'll it'll be like steps she's making or something in the sand and it's really kind of cool so that's i didn't know you guys did that that's super awesome and it's probably not something we should be doing but we kind of have to do it sometimes it's another one of those right. things where it's like if if the budget depending, yeah depending on depending the budget, on the yeah. budget but yeah, yeah. i mean yeah, I interesting we send it out to an audio engineer and we did send out that resort one to an audio engineer and he took out the bell because he was like that can't be real <laughs> <laughs> i was like that's an actual bell you that have to leave that actually in the dinner bell. <laughs> that's the dinner bell He's we like, need oh, the bell <laughs> Yeah. for dinner bell <laughs> he put in like yeah. a generic sounding bell thinking that was just the bell that i had like he's like that can't yeah. be a real bell but, yeah yeah how funny um okay so let's talk travel let like let's talk um about like pleasure travel um you guys have gone to a lot of places some of which probably is for work but obviously you guys enjoy doing that what are some of the craziest places you guys have gone um i know what you'd say what japan yeah I, I feel like some of our favorites my favorite probably of all time is japan okay um, why and then i just love just the culture the food the the combination of like crazy modern futuristic with like the really really old ancient tradition. um tradition and buildings and you know just that kind of like mashup of it i just love and okay like Tokyo is just insanely busy and it's just like it's just you stand there you're like what is happening you know it's just so overwhelming your senses basically and that's so. one place too where it's like when you get there you're like like you can't make out street sign names because it's not like using I mean they have like, some English but a lot of it's yeah you know it's, not, it's all in Japanese and you you don't know what those symbols mean so yeah. it's like right. you don't you like matching symbols basically and yeah but what was the coolest part about japan for you jenna like pick one thing uh, was it, it wasn't mcdonald's no it was not <laughs> definitely i in my fa i mean i just love the food there like my favorite going to like the little ramen shops you know where you walk in and you order what you want on a little checklist and you give them your paper and you sit there and it's like this little individual booth that you're sitting in wow and, i mean we'd sit next to each other but you know and they'd like pass your bowl of ramen through like this slot in the wall and, oh wow and so just like just things like that that was like one of my favorite restaurants i mean we went there mm -hmm. way too many times probably but it was so good you know and um just the things just I don't know I love history so I love that part of it and then like we went to a robot restaurant where it, that was one of the weirdest that was crazy I it was like it. have an eight-year-old boy come up with his idea of his like the perfect restaurant <laughs> but really? it was almost like a show so like you sit down and they give you the food it wasn't really about the food you know they gave you like this little food thing but in the center it was like a ring and like these giant robots would come out. Everything was like black, it, like dark. And they would come out with like all these neon things and these flashing lights and this crazy music. And you had like little glow sticks that you'd like chant with and like cheer on. What and was it called? The robot restaurant. Look up yeah. the robot it, restaurant. It's just okay. like, like it's, what is happening? You said they're like, what are we doing right now? It is just like it is the things like that. Thing. It's like these things you just would never even imagine up, you know? And yeah. Like, yeah, so it was pretty yeah. cool. So just just the whole combination of everything there, you know, huh. visiting the old temples, and yeah. we did like a traditional tea ceremony where, um, you know, you're in this little sitting on the floor on these little mats, and you know they're showing you this whole ritual that they do to prepare the tea, and it's just all this really intentional um, meaning behind all the steps and the process, and you know, so it's like that culture and history mixed with just the wacky weird things that i just i found it fascinating yeah yeah what about you michael what's the craziest place for you or the coolest place <laughs> the craziest or coolest i think i think one of my favorite places i mean iceland's up there I, so galapagos is up there but i really liked slovenia a lot slovenia was like this place where i never even really knew much about jenna did all the research and she was like why don't we go to slovenia for our 10 year anniversary i'm like i don't care sure I'll and i like it i promise and when we got there it was just like this place that was just like so beautiful and we did we got to do a lot of cool things like 
paragliding and um, paddle boarding through their old city and wow, uh, um, old, or old old downtown basically. Yeah, old and town then then. Uh, what else did we do? We whitewater did. rafting or whitewater, whitewater kayaking. kayaking. Um, which, which we actually accidentally ended up on the wrong tour. Ours was supposed to be like a beginner's type thing. And with we like were a rapid, with a little bit of rapids. <laughs> and all of a sudden we get there and they're like, here's your helmet. Here's your kayak. Good luck. And we hiked a mile in with this heavy kayak into like this full out rapid where it was like, probably you're, you're not a beginner at that point. You, you should know what you're doing. And I mean, they gave us a little lesson, which was, which they gave good, us a little know? lesson, but <laughs> like, okay, we're going to die. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, how did we end up on this? And, um, I rolled a couple times, was able to get out or get up and, yeah. um, I got stuck on a rock once and all of a sudden I look and Jenna's come in. <laughs> I couldn't throttle, stop and I'm like trying to like back paddle. And she just like <laughs> torpedoes right into my thigh and like, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was an experience. It was pretty cool. Though. And then and then the company was like trying to we asked for our pictures because they took some pictures and they could they're looking at our tour and they're like, uh, we don't see you guys on the tour. I'm like, I think we we're on this tour. <laughs> and they're like, oh, oh. <laughs> wrong tour. Yeah. yeah. But it was pretty cool um, though. And we did canyoning. We canyoning. Hike up a bunch and you like repel and repel and oh yeah the canyon basically and slide down rocks and it was like so as far as a cliff jump yeah as far as adventure that was that was we had a ton of that there in a place that i didn't expect and didn't know much about and it's like the southern portion of the alps kind of goes through yeah the country wow so a lot of time there which was really neat but i meant galapagos was amazing iceland was amazing i love mexico like central mexico that's that's amazing to me so um, Latin American, Latin America is a favorite area of mine, but yeah. So I, I remember uh, having a meal with you guys once. I don't remember what the restaurant was and, or even the town, but somewhere in Minnesota, we, the four of us went to eat and we were talking about wild foods in different places. <laughs> and if I remember right, it seems like Micah is more of a, uh, a basic white boy, if you will. And it <laughs> seems like Jenna was more of and maybe I'm mistaken, maybe I'm flipping oh, yeah. this around. And Jenna is more of like an explorer when it comes to food. So Jenna, what's the craziest thing you have ever tried food-wise? Well, I feel like the, I mean, Micah actually probably has tried. So I'll say this, you have it right. I'm more picky by far. She is I'm willing more to try adventurous. Things. But when we're on the road and someone provides a meal for us and they're so passionate about it, I will eat every bite and say, oh my gosh, that was amazing. And I'll have more. Like, and I'm not just out of respect. Yeah. And yeah. when and it comes to like, I'll meat. be dying inside. I'll be like, <laughs> choking it down. I'm, swall- <laughs> I'm not chewing the food, I'm swallowing the food. But, and I'm more like with, uh, with meats, I'm not as adventurous with like, a meat like Micah had guinea pig in Ecuador and I'm like I, I can't do it I I just cannot do it you know so like um guinea pig was the worst because yeah. it came out with its with it was just it and just they, it was like they just took the fur off and no yeah yeah and like you tore into it and it tasted like did you say it tastes like tuna almost? Yeah, it's it tasted like the smell of like fish pellets. You know what I mean? Like they was that normal food for them, or was it like a delicacy? Yeah, it was a, de- like, that that was like a, a delicacy. That was a, I mean, but they we do. spent hundred and twenty dollars on that guinea pig, not like collectively the whole table, a group, like a group. A people, yeah. yeah. But yeah. wow, <clears throat> did so, but you both tried it? Did you try it, Jenna? I didn't try it. I, Jenna didn't didn't try it. Try it. I mean, it was like a group of friends that ordered it, so I didn't feel so like meat's it. weird. Like, weird you out. Yeah. But like we, I mean, I did try like cow tongue um, in the oyster omelet in Taiwan. That was the worst. Stinky was, tofu was terrible. I actually enjoyed stinky tofu. It's kind of like a blue cheese or, you know, like those like, um, it's a those de- kind it's, of cheeses that are a little tangy, you know? Okay. Um, it was kind of almost like that, but then it was deep fried. And um, cause it's like fermented something tofu. I don't know. Okay. Even, what it is you could smell it all it, like you always wondered what that smell was when you're walking through some of the food markets down there and then you where went, was that was that also ecuador that, that was, was in taiwan 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 okay yeah and it it smells bad like rotten feet or something you know it smells horrible <sighs> but it was so it was like 
breaded so it had a, it was little cubes and it was like crisply breaded and then it had like this good sauce on it so it actually it was actually pretty delicious micah about had a no it was something that you that, would, but... no that's something you would feed satan <laughs> it is was... the smell was horrible but it you know if you get past the smell i thought it was actually not bad but yeah the we went on a food tour in taiwan and that was one of the things that we had and the oyster omelet was another thing we had on that tour and it was, was it was like an egg omelet with oysters in it but then they had like this soy sauce gelatin, gelatin gravy on the top of it oh my gosh and it just like the texture that doesn't sound good like, to me no, the consistency it like a little the bit consistency like, of it was like let's say that you had a head cold for like a week and all of a sudden it <laughs> all came out at once and landed on an omelet <laughs> So it was more, I think that was more of a mental thing. Like it didn't really taste all that bad, but it was more of just like the texture. We couldn't, you know, but um, they like their jelly substances. So Jenna's theory, because she knows that I'm a picky eater. We go to a lot of places. Her theory is, well, let's do a food tour. I'm like, awesome. But her theory is because she wants to try all these things and that way she can try it all, find out what we like, and then go from there which makes sense rather then, than dragging him to like seven restaurants he's not gonna like let's just take little samples yeah. of it and then a lot of times we'll find something that we like and end up eating for the rest of the trip a lot of you know too so yeah, yeah. but that was the one time i totally i'm like i'm sorry i can't <laughs> can't do it can't do that yeah, that's crazy so uh married and been together since high school you travel all over for pleasure and for business um you work together side by side um well kind of side by side because i know you guys on a personal level i also know you don't always work side by side let's talk about your schedule when you're not on the road um do you guys work like a nine to five when you're at home no. never no <laughs> not at all. let's talk about that dynamic <laughs> which i think is like the best thing ever because that for gives- the record i would think not to interrupt you i would totally agree with you i would be on the same page as that it probably yeah. is why it works so yeah, tell- because- explain that like when for well, the people that don't know what we're talking about go ahead yeah. and explain that. otherwise we would be 24 7 together together which- and which is lucky for her but like <laughs> of course, of course. Uh-huh. no but like <laughs> I'm a morning person. I get up early. Like I'm up at like six or seven and I go to bed like in the winter times, if it's dark, see ya. <laughs> I'll go to bed early, but like 8.39. I can, <laughs> if stuff's going on, I can stay up and that's fine. But so like the mornings are kind of like my time from like six to one, seven to one. That's like my time. Jenna is a night owl. She's, yeah. um, she'll, I yeah. usually, when everyone goes to bed around 10, 11 or so, I stay up and I work from then to usually like between four and 6 a.m. depending on the day. Um, and then I'll sleep from like four, to six to like noon-ish time frame. Um, yeah. I'm like totally on a backward schedule, but yeah. um, it's, it's one of the most productive and the most alert and aware and I just can like power through things in the silence of the night when everyone else is like quiet sleeping and yeah I mean for I think it I think if it works like I I make fun of it and I think it's funny and whenever we're all together I always make fun of Micah because it's like oh it's eight o'clock dude you're like it's way past your bedtime (laughs) although I've seen you party till 1 a.m like I've seen you uh you know play a card game till 1 a.m so I know you I know you can party if there's stuff Every going, <laughs> if there's stuff going on, I'll stay up and yeah. like a lot of that stuff. I mean, we don't get to see each other that often, so you're wanting to take advantage of all that. Sure. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm fine going to bed at eight thirty <laughs> nine o'clock and yeah. Getting I know for me, also, like, I I'm most pro- do it. No sunrises are just as pretty as sunsets. They are, and so. I see them a lot before I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah high five each other on your way to bed when he's getting up coffee's ready her dad will get up and you'll be getting ready yeah when we're at the lake if my dad's here he he wakes up at like 4 a.m a lot of times so it'll be like good morning good night you know (laughs) yeah that's crazy um for me like that i'm i've learned that i'm most productive um in the morning and i like alone time a lot I really like alone time. And for me, like maybe similar to you guys, I do a lot of work from my phone. So I may even throw something on the TV just for the background, or maybe I'm listening to a podcast and and I, I'll, 
I can build content. I can, a lot of what I can do is right from my phone and, and, uh, and, and I like, and if I just don't have distractions, I can get a lot done, you know? So I like that. And I like to not have the distractions. So I admire, I think it works. I think it's great for you both. And I also think the fact that you do work together and you obviously live together and you do life together, I think it's, it's awesome. And I, it probably does keep you both um, very appreciative of each other and, 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 and in love, you know? So that's, yeah. I think it's super cool. It's funny and it's fun to make fun of, especially yeah. when we're all together, you know, but yeah. Jenna, I should probably tell you because if Anna hasn't already um, so when we were at the cabin, I, after we left the cabin last in January, we went to your, to uh, Micah's dad's house. And I was like, I've never drank coffee. I mean, I don't drink coffee. I didn't yeah. drink coffee. And um, I think it's funny that you like drink co coffee and water is you're double fisting all hours of the day. <laughs> and, right. <laughs> you're correct. <laughs> and so, um, and, and so I always think it's funny and, Anna like isn't like a hardcore coffee drinker, but she drinks coffee. Anyways, so I've never been a big coffee guy per se, and at, at all actually. And so we were at Anna's dad's um, after we had been at the cabin with you guys, and I was like, and they were all drinking coffee, and I was like, hey, you think I could just pour coffee over ice? Because I do like if I go to Starbucks, we like Starbucks. I'll always get like an iced latte. Mm -hmm. And so I said, um, hey, do you think we could? is there any reason I couldn't just pour this over ice? And she goes, well, yeah, that's what you do at Starbucks, you know? And I said, okay, cool. So I did that with a little splash of like creamer, you know? And I was like, dude, this is so good. <laughs> and so I, I did that for like two different days. Like I would have that. And even like, we'd be playing cards and I'd be like sipping on that and water because I do, I am a water drinker. Right. So I don't want to replace that because I'm all about hydration, you know? And so and, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not about to be a, a coffee drinker. So we're halfway home, 13 hour drive, right? We're halfway home. And I'm like, babe, I really want a coffee pot. And she's like, you've got to, you've got to be kidding me, right? Because we have a Keurig that like, I've never, I don't use, I've never used it it's for her. She uses it. It's like these little single things or whatever. Um, but so she, like the whole rest of the drive, she's like looking up coffee pots. And so now we have this coffee pot and, um, and I drink iced coffee every morning. That so amazing. Thank you, Jenna. Yeah. <laughs> welcome and I'm sorry. You know? <laughs> yes. But, and, and the reason I even thought to say that was because it actually has been kind of a routine. If I I have some private time in the mornings I'll yeah. usually Anna's up and has started work or whatever and she'll we we make what we do is she, she makes a half a pot and so she makes hers and there's enough for me to make a, a big iced coffee and a little and a in a big cup and uh, I'll sip on that and get and get some some stuff started on my day so and I've actually kind of enjoyed it it's kind of like a little it's becoming a little tradition for me so yeah. Yeah. it's silly and it's funny and it also makes me feel no offense to you but it makes me I'm like I feel old which I know you've always been a coffee drinker right. but I'm like and Anna thinks it's that's why I was like she's gonna end up busting my balls for it anyway she's gonna tell you guys about it one day because I've always thought it was I'm like I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm not old I'm not drinking coffee right. every day you know and yeah. now I'm like did, did you make coffee or do I need to yeah. <laughs> Huh. Yeah. yeah it's so funny so well you know i really enjoy getting to visit with you guys and hear more about about life and what you guys do so what's um let's do two things before we wrap up one is um for somebody who is inspired i always want to bring value and i i always my goal is just that maybe if somebody was listening that has a desire to do something uh above average right or to take an ordinary day-to-day -day life and do something super extraordinary because I think we could all do that that's what you guys have done that's what I've chosen to do with my life I hope that my son does the same thing and Anna the people in my circle just you know instead of just a, a clock in clock out playing it safe life live a, a life of abundance and extraordinary opportunities and I think you guys are a great example of that so what would you maybe say to somebody and maybe it's not photography or vlogging or traveling but maybe it's um, who knows what it is I, I don't know but what, what would be a good, um, how, what would you recommend to somebody that has some goals and desires, but is a little bit afraid to, to push play, right? To, to really just get out there and do it. What's to, what's a maybe good piece of advice for someone? You want to go? Um, I would say like one of the things is to just start doing it. Even if you don't make it public, you know, just to start um, like for me, it was just, just start writing, just start doing the thing that kind of scares you a little bit. And you don't necessarily have to quit what you're doing right away. 
but if you know if you just kind of start those things that you're passionate on the side and just start going with it and doing it eventually it can grow into something that you know is either just a fun hobby or it could turn into something like a career you know so just kind of maybe start before you're ready and just jump in and do it and do the things that scare you I guess no I think that's so important do the things that scare you I think that's that quote if if your dreams don't scare you they're not big enough yeah yeah Uh, yeah amen what about you Micah do you have something yeah, I mean, like, I think right now we're in a time, fortunate time, where <laughs> you have access to everything. Like, when I went to school, there wasn't YouTube, there was YouTube, but it wasn't like the way it is now. There wasn't Instagram, there wasn't all these social platforms where you can learn all this stuff. Like, you had to go to college for it. But now it's like you have everything in your hand in that phone. So I meant, like, you have the opportunity to take whatever you love as a passion of yourself and make it a career. Like you don't have to go get a job. You can create a job and it is as easy as that. It's, it's, it'll be hard work, it's but- hard work and it's up to you to make it successful, but no one's stopping you and no one's saying you can't do it. It's literally, it's a, it's a simple concept. It's super hard work, but you have, everyone has access for the most part to just create a job that they want to do and they just have to start doing it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but other than that, it's like meeting as many people as you know, and going and doing stuff. Like you talked about Braxton, always falling in those situations Well, you got to go and get yourself in that situation to fall into, to be able to um, get in those situations. And you never know who you're going to meet. You never, I mean, so yeah, I think you just have to start doing stuff and all the cliches are cliches because <laughs> they're real. You know yeah, I mean? they've been done, right? They've been done, so. Yeah. And I, yeah, I think even you, you know, you, I I didn't know this about you until this interview, but you talked, like, I didn't know that you started with assisting in Florida and that's, you know, I, as soon as you said that, I was thinking about Braxton. I'm like, yeah, it's just about asking. Like, that's all it's about yeah, asking. So that's the thing. yeah, I think like my biggest, the reason I have the style that I have is because I've worked with five, eight other shooters where I could mix and match what I liked about everyone and get rid of the stuff I don't like and take the stuff I do like and create my own style based yeah. off of that. So, yeah, I want to add, I, I, I generally ask that question without giving, I, well, I'm a, I'm a over talker, right? But I try not to give uh, my input on it, but I want to, well, something that's really sticking out for me <clears throat> just in my life right now is that the reality is what's, what feels right today is probably going to be different than what feels right, right tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So for example, the cameras that you started using 10 or 12 years ago um, are different than what you use today. Now, part of that is because just like an iPhone four versus an iPhone, whatever we're on 37, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they, things change, things evolve. But another reason is because you evolve and you change and you grow and your style evolves and changes and grows. Now, what I've really started to learn and I, and it's the, it's for me personally, it's the most, it's the most beautiful thing is it's okay to evolve. Like it's okay to, it's okay that, that, uh, so like my podcast, I started first part of 2021 and my whole intention was just like Jenna said, just start, just start. I just, I told myself I was going to do a podcast every week and I did it. And it is a whole different podcast today, but guys, it's not just a different podcast. The microphone's different, different, the lighting's different. The tools are different. My style's different. My talent's different. My interview style's different. Um, where I'm, I'm literally sitting three feet from what's about to be within the next 30 days, I will have an inner, a full studio in this house, a podcast studio. And mm-hmm. that was not my intention a year ago, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and so just like a camera, we evolve. And just like, you know, it's funny because Braxton's on his second camera now and he's got this whole like big to do. Right. And I, the reality is I I've lived some life. We've, we've lived some life. Like that probably won't be the, in six months or a year, that probably will be a whole different setup than it is today. But today that's what fuels him. Right. And so today what fuels you is what's in front of you. And I think it's totally okay to just embrace your current, embrace your current and know that your current's going to be different tomorrow. And I haven't, I've always, I've done so much. I'm such an overthinker. Sometimes I make things so much more complicated, but the reality is like, just start, just do it. Like 
whatever podcast studio I end up with in the next 30 days might look completely different uh, in a year, or I may outgrow it, or I may not want to do podcasts anymore, Mm -hmm. but you got to start. Right. And so I'm just, I I agree with, I mean, I think what your guys' feedback was incredible. And I just think for me, it's, that's a really personal, it's really like very current for me in this day and age, because lately I've been allowing myself to live in that space of like, dude, it's totally okay. Cause it's going to change tomorrow. And that's fine. Not in a, not a negative way. No. And I think being able to embrace things changing is a good thing too, because things evolve, you know, what, what you enjoyed yesterday might not be what you enjoy or what mm-hmm. worked yesterday might not work tomorrow. And just having that mind frame that change is good and okay. Well, and change is inevitable too. Right. And it's like, I think the biggest strength you could have is adaptability. Like if you can't mm-hmm. adapt with the change, you're going to be one of the people that are like, back in my day, we did it this way. Well, <laughs> it's today. <laughs> so yeah. you have to adapt to every situation. I think like that's the biggest part about growth too, is the change. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So you guys are, do what's that? No, I was, I was going to shift gears real and before we wrap up. So you guys are both super humble, very normal, very, nobody would know you guys are big time Hollywood <laughs> videographers. <laughs> uh, but having said that, what is the biggest, what are you most, like take like do your because again I know you guys are very humble people but what is what is the mo what have you done business wise that is the that you are the most proud of Ooh. one thing and maybe they're different for you, both of you but I'll ask you separately. Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> Perfect. I feel like I I don't ever feel like anything is good enough I feel like it yeah. can always be better you know so yeah. like I feel like we both look at our work and like, oh. like oh I wish we could have done this you know or we could have yeah. done that um hmm. oh my man explore Minnesota was a fun yeah. campaign that was For cool you, that that, was- well I think what was cool about that was like when we moved back to Minnesota that was an actual goal is like to get that client and to do it and we got that and we got to sh- shoot it like a tv broadcast commercial like four of them for them so that was cool um yeah and i think in in that regard i don't know if it's necessarily like the thing i'm most proud of but one of the goals on my end too was like working with the different like tourism boards that we've worked with um one of them was churchill manitoba getting um they don't send a lot of people up to churchill manitoba it's like way up in northern Canada and really hard to reach and we ended up working on a project with um Visit Manitoba for that and so I just think like that was like one of the projects was like oh if we could do that that would be and you and you did yeah we did and but I don't think I could look at any of my work and think that there's or our work and say that there's one thing not room for improvement but one thing that I'm like the most proud of because I think what I'm most proud of is that collective of or that body of work that we've been able to produce and like the stories we've been able to share and tell and the people that we've been able to meet like that's my biggest takeaway when I look at all my work is that not so much the 30 second video that you watched but how I got to be a part of that 30 second or whose life I got to meet while making this little documentary and like to me like I'm more proud of those stories than the finished product sometimes and I think collectively I look at the whole body of work and like I think that's what I get most proud of or yeah yeah that's awesome that that shows your growth that i i see videos on my our website that is like from 10 years ago but that got me to the video that i posted six months ago and Mm -hmm. um it's kind of like our time capsule i guess too Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah what a great um what a great documentation of your story you know um not just your life story, but just your business story. Kind of like I was talking about the podcast, just to be able to see. 
I remember somebody said to me, whenever you, whenever you finally start your podcast, you're going to love, and I even said this probably on my first episode, like a year, over a year ago, like, it's going to be so awesome to go for, look at episode one when I'm on episode 40. And yeah. this, it's very similar to you guys go back and look at your early work and to see how much you've evolved and you've grown and your talent is even your eye, I'm sure shifts and adjust. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's cool. And also like the question I asked is probably an unfair question because you know, even from your client perspective, you don't necessarily want to be more proud of one piece of work um, versus another, because really what I do know and what you guys both know is you're giving everything to every piece. Um, And they're just going to, they're going to land differently. You know, Um, you both said, well, we want to do better every time. And that that's awesome. That's not because you don't do great. It's because you want to improve. And I, I think that's a careful piece. You don't, you know, it's always important to I would hate for you ever to like have a, a thought of like, we're not good enough, but that you want to just become better. You want to always like raise the bar. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you know, yeah. certainly don't want people to ever feel a negative connotation of like, well, I'm not good enough to, you know, but that's not the case. It's just like, I want to always evolve. And that's always what you improvement. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So what's next for you guys? If we got like a minute and a half left. What's next for you guys? You travel all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we well, have a little bit of time in Minnesota. Um, mm-hmm. Well, actually, I do. Micah has a couple of projects um, on his own the next couple of months. But then um, this summer, we're doing a lot of KOA. Campgrounds, um, Campgrounds of, America. of America. Projects. And so we'll be busy with that kind of all yeah. over the place. And some um, res- Terramore Outdoor Resorts. There's some different tourism things. Different tourism things. And then I got, yeah. Uh, one of the fun things we have coming up is in July, we're hiking to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah, that's right. And really? For a couple of days. Yep. Yeah. And so, so that we'll, we're trying to get our cardio up I a might, little bit on I that. I might be airlifted out we'll of there. We'll see how that goes. Is that for a project? And that's for fun. That's, that's <laughs> really? A, a, yeah, weirdly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So so that's we're looking forward to that, but yeah 4 thousand feet of elevation was it six miles down eight miles out About roughly yeah roughly yeah so. that's crazy <laughs> fun fun so, <laughs> i'm super busy that week <laughs> sorry can't make it <clears throat> yeah a lot of work but we got couple some things, couple yeah. fun things Okay, last question. The next trip to Oklahoma, will you go with us to Cattleman's Steakhouse? It's like the oldest steakhouse in the state. It's in the stockyards. And will you guys have lamb fries with Braxton and I while Anna watches? Lamb fries? Yep. Uh, uh, you could count Jenna out, but I will. <laughs> I was going to say that might be a Micah thing. <laughs> Why not Jenna? meats she's she's oh that's right she's Uh, weird with me but i will definitely go and i'll sit with anna and okay and she'll tell us how gross us boys are and you will co-sign with her and have a cup of coffee probably that's perfect i appreciate you guys so much hey just so everybody knows all of the information about mike and jenna and Kivit creative and wonder the map will be in the description uh, below or to the side or wherever make sure that um, you go check out their pages make sure you like them and I don't know if subscribe is even a thing, but if it is, make sure you do that as well. Hey, do you guys have a YouTube? Uh, we do. It hasn't been updated in a long time, but yeah. okay. I wanted to map again for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to encourage you guys to get on your YouTube game. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like you don't have anything but free time anyways, right? Yeah. Right? I know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you guys again so much. And we'll make sure everything's linked uh, below and so that people can find you guys. And um, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with us. And we appreciate you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.